Hello, my name is Deacon Michael Tischel. I serve as the director for the Crossroads Summer Institute. I've been serving in that capacity for going on six years now. What is Crossroad? Crossroad is a place where we invite young men and women, high school students, to exercise their God-given capacity to yearn for life, life with a capital L. You know, what does it mean to be alive? What does it mean to experience life? Oh, hi! <laughs> awesome. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, bye. Let it be noted that we wanted the dark purple for Crossroad and they gave us pastel. Unacceptable. We're excited to meet the new Crossroad participants. Yes. This is the legendary HC van, perhaps the van that I was picked up in when I did Crossroad in 2007. Uh, we're here to pick up two of our students and I have my signs ready to go and we just need to track them down. Our, our director, our assistant director, everyone we get to hire, and then these beautiful young people who I have to thank their parents for, I have to thank their parish priests, I have to thank their Sunday school teachers, we have to thank their camp counselors, everybody who has led them to a place where they want to apply to a program like Crossroad and spend 10 days really taking their investment in their life in Christ and their faith to the next level and for the Orthodox Church, for the future of the Orthodox Church. So we have um, just an incredible opportunity here. Um, so anyway, there's really just like some amazing pieces that he had, that Archbishop Bianco was in his personal collection. You can see, you can see what he looked like as a young, um, how they like, 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 now, and how they have a major choice to themselves, say who they are, and so up here, and so up Now, I want you to look next to the people next to you and give them a high five. I really believe in this program. I am a product of this program. And it's not just because I work for the program that I believe in it, but I've actually seen lives transformed. Um, sometimes it's hard for me to put into words because Crossroad isn't really something you can explain in just a few sentences. It's something you experience. It's something that you feel. It's something that reaches deep down into your, your soul. I've seen the way that people come to know and love Christ and each other through this program. And you can't make that stuff up. You really can't. So I just want to say on behalf of uh, our president, Father Chris, uh, all the faculty, the staff, the students here, we're really excited to have you here for the Crossroad program. Uh, I'm really proud uh, to be a, a part of this, and I'm very proud of the students we have, uh, the staff that he's assembled to work with you guys over the next 10 days. Unlike most camps, uh, you kind of grow up in the camping program, and you get to be uh, the little kids, and you get to be the big kids, and you get to be the counselors, and it, this is a place where you only got 10 days uh, with this, this group of people. 
So it's going to be a very interesting 10 days because you're coming from a variety of backgrounds from different places in the country. So we're hitting you guys with a very intense program at this very uh, really important uh, well, crossroad, if you will, <laughs> of your lives. I beg you, I ask you to uh, really put your whole heart into the program uh, in the sense uh, it's not a recreational program, it's an institute. Uh, you're going to have some challenging classes, some great discussions, some great sessions from the staff. Uh, put your whole heart into it and be sponges. Take everything you have from this because it's it's, you get one shot at Crossroad. This is your one shot, your one ten days. Life is small. A moment is huge. Life is small. A moment is huge. Okay? You could say crossroad, the 10 days, right? The 10 days that we have together is small, but one moment can be huge. And I just want to remind you that vocation is an ongoing response, and it's not necessarily found only in, it's not found only in your careers. That your vocation is your ongoing response to Christ's call to love God and his neighbor. So, so in every moment, when you are responding in love and service to God and people, you are living out your vocation. It's not something you're going to discover down the road and like come upon it. It's every moment you have the opportunity to live your vocation uniquely with the strength that God has given you. So just remember that. Keep that, you know, remember that. It's not, your vocation's not far out there. Right up in every moment, you are able to live your own So one of the most unique things about the Crossroad program is that our staff comes from the Holy Cross Greek Orthodox School of Theology. So when you put the staff, these young adults who are immersed in the Orthodox faith, theology and scripture and patristics and church history with young people just a few years younger than them, who are also wrestling with tough questions, the recipe between the two of them is just unbelievable. It's an incredible, it's an incredible result to see the two interact. The staff has been trained for like eight months and we've been reading so many books. Books about um, Dr. Rossi's Becoming a Healing Presence, books about teenage youth, we read The Little Prince. So, so a huge array of material has come our way so that we can better connect with the students. Crossroad, I think, is providing a toolbox, all right, for each person, for each participant that comes. So the toolbox is understanding their pathway to Christ. They all come closer to Christ. They're all affirmed in their uniqueness, and they all understand that they are safe to be who they are, and that it's okay if one person has one strength and one person has another. They are no different, and in fact, they help each other. Their faith, their jobs, their relationships, these things are, are all interwoven, that they aren't sort of mutually um, exclusive subjects that are compartmentalized. We really complement each other well as a team in terms of staff, but also the dynamic shifts when we bring our beloved participants into it and we adjust and we adapt and we interact and we become a whole new community. And so this communal aspect is really important and it's, it's the whole reason that we're here, learning how to be in communion with one another and within the Orthodox world. College and life beyond Crossroad is really fun and exciting and you guys now have an amazing community and support network to walk you through that and that makes all the difference in the world. And so we welcome you to our family of the Crossroad alumni. We are headed to Project Adventure in Beverly, Massachusetts, and it's a ropes course. Um, I'm excited for um, like just interacting with everybody more, getting to know them better, um, all the teamwork, and like of course like the ropes. It's gonna be a heck of fun. 
uh, we take amazing buses and we all go and then we pile out and we bring the snacks and it's a great time. So we start off with some team building exercises. Your arms should just be barely brushing the person. Having fun and playing together is one of the best ways to kind of get to know people and, and to set the stage for uh, deeper learning. Back, front, right, left, left. left. They need these things to kind of start to open up, start to laugh at each other, start to laugh at themselves. We're ready. Okay. And then we're gonna twist the buckle a little bit and then kind of fix it. Wait, is it a video or a camera? Yeah. <laughs> it's a video. Because <laughs> And now I can't really stop smiling. Like, yeah. Right yeah, I know. But yeah. I think the hardest part was like stop hugging each other and holding yeah, hands. Yeah, we didn't want to yeah. let go of each other. Oh. Letting go was the funnest part, though. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, leaned into it. Yeah. And after they all get down, and after the adrenaline has kind of ebbed away, they all realize that, wow, like we're all laughing. We all get a group picture, and almost without them knowing, they're ten times closer than they were an hour before. Because we're all at same and we're in this together. Yeah, yeah we yeah. are. <laughs> Let us do our job. We'll do good. Let's go, guys. Woo! 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 We killed it. Together. We leaned yeah. back yeah. and almost died, but we survived. Underdogs? <laughs> Underdogs. Right. One, two, three. Two, three. Underdogs. So the, a normal crossroad day uh, basically begins and ends with Orthros and Vespers. That's first and foremost very important. Um, but more so in the morning we have breakfast and then we tend to have classes uh, on scripture and theology with intermittent discussion groups uh, between the two. I would say the first thing, you know, given all this that we've said about the swerve, so what's the, what's the practical payoff of knowing that the Bible is set up this way or that this is an important part of the scriptures? Um, I would say the first thing is don't judge. The second thing I would say about living in the swerve is not to value the praise of men. God gave us free will because we have it. It's a matter of love. And if we choose not to do that, right? It's, it's, and so it's called the divine risk that God took. I mean, it's, 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 it's almost, that's the way the Orthodox theologians speak about, it's divine risk, because if you are to have a relationship of love, it has to be free. Uh, we're just getting on the bus right now. We're gonna be going to the Coptic church, which is really cool, because uh, one of my good friends is actually a Coptic Christian, but I've never actually been to a church that's Coptic before. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, and what we try to do here is we try to, hopefully at our level, the more we interact together, the more we understand each other, the better we will have in the future as Orthodox Christians as a whole. Martyrs of the Theban Legion, this is St. Marie, St. Augustine. I'm really joyful and also really awestruck and I, felt, I feel really small, but I also feel like this may be like one of the most amazing points of this entire trip. Uh, right now we're boarding the bus to go to the Bulgarian Orthodox Church, which is uh, Deacon Mike's home parish. We go to different churches 
to enrich our perspective about orthodoxy as a whole. We have participants from all different jurisdictions as well, so it's really nice and inclusive experience to really get a sense of what it means to be in a different church, worshiping with the same faith. The scriptures that speak to us about God, that tell us about God and how he created us and who we really are and what he, what he, the, the path that he laid down for us. But we have freedom to walk it or not. So uh, we just came back from the Rokor Church. There was um, a really awesome quartet there and, uh, and they, sounded, they sounded amazing. They were behind us, we couldn't see them. So it was just like angels from behind us were singing the service because it was, it was just an incredible experience to hear such, uh, such incredible singing and, uh, and it was just really awesome. Families were separated, so on in Bosnia and Croatia, and so some of those refugees ended up in New England. So they are part of this community. Honestly, just because we're all doing it together, it's a lot of fun. Then they have this very nice room behind where we had dinner, and they had a piano there, and so I got to play the piano, which was really nice. I really enjoyed that. And we heard uh, Vlad play on the viola too, which was really nice. Okay, we talked about the martyrs and we talked about suffering. That's not to glorify suffering. You will have crosses in your life. You don't have to ask for them. They'll come. So you don't have to ask. You don't have to seek out suffering. We're not telling you that you're better if you go out and suffer. You know, you're supposed to like smile on Instagram all the time and you're supposed to have the, the good diploma on the wall and there's all these superficial things that are constantly being pushed at us from give yourself the space to breathe and give yourself the space to prayerfully and patiently figure it out. You know, and actually open yourself to the voice of God who's, who's active in your life. People aren't what we think they are when we see them, so we really should never judge someone by their cover, even though it sounds so cliche, but it's true. And when we talk about love of neighbor, there's no question, again, that love of neighbor reaches the other, the other person, the other group of people. Um, but I think it's also helpful for us to keep in mind that um, Sometimes the best way to love our neighbor is to not be too hard on ourselves. Patience, kindness, compassion, I think these qualities um, can subtly allow us to become more comfortable with ourselves um, and then allow our deep, true selves to emerge from beneath the surface of things where maybe, as you know, we heard from Dr. Rossi, maybe oftentimes a lot of the problems in our life just stem from the fact that we don't know ourselves, our very own selves. We do a lot of be still time and ask them to go outside and spend time looking at nature, analyzing nature. Our idea there was really to show them God's creation and have them see it. 
and then you look closer at the trees and you see how like all the branches go out in different ways and none of them are the same and but when you look at them all together they look the same and they're all equal and I think that's how God sees us we're all different we're all unique but then if you look at us all together we're all equal and we're all the same but one thing that's cool out of um, Wounded by Love by St. Porfidios, he says that nature is the secret gospel. But when one does not possess inner grace, nature is no benefit. Nature awakens us, but it cannot bring us to paradise. And so in many ways, I think there's a sense in which um, love of neighbor has to start on some levels with love of the marginalized self. Then you can pray. And then in praying does connect us with people who may be miles away, but we still have that opportunity to connect with them through prayer. So, people assume that because this is an academic summer institute that we don't have fun, but we have so much fun. I just, I just, just God bless everybody, okay? Everybody. Wagon Master Elf. Whoever said double Master Elf, extra points. There are some really beautiful views here on campus, and then they get to go downtown and actually see those buildings face to face. <laughs> here we are. Here we reside in our native land of Boston. Boston, yes. Uh, where we've come to form a great new nation, and we've stumbled upon a young group of teenagers. I, yes, who happen to be wearing the same shirts that we're wearing, which don't and, make much sense. And a variety of pantaloons that I don't understand. Yes, what are the pantaloons? The shorts and showing their bare I, legs, and frankly, I, it's offensive. And I just came back from churning my butter. <laughs> And we are about to explore the deep and rich history of the city. And how religion was formed in this area. Yet in addition, we shall walk through the common area, known as the Boston Common. But it's really critical to go out into Boston, into the city. It's very intelligent to have that worked into the program. Hall, to Thaniel Hall, which is a historic marketplace in Boston, and there's like a bunch of food stands and ice cream and shopping, and it's going to be really awesome. Um, and then afterwards we all got ice cream, which was a lot of fun, and bubble tea, of course, because who doesn't want bubble tea in the middle of summer in Boston? Hi, um, can I have the green tea bubble tea, please? So if I'm talking about fun, I would say our beach day was really fun because all of the kids got to really let loose, enjoy the water. It's also called Singing Beach because which, apparently the um, sand sinks when you walk on it. I love Singing Beach at Crossroad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We 
told that we had five dollars each for ice cream. So we decided to pull our, all our money together to uh, to get this. It was only eight dollars, so we saved Crossroads seven dollars. Yeah, we we're are all practically about practically heroes. Yeah, we're the, the hidden, hidden heroes. heroes. <laughs> glad that I found people that are willing to do something crazy like this with me. It makes it makes Crossroad pretty awesome. And I'm glad that I have friends. <laughs> <laughs> Every little moment, like all the little moments that happen have been like the best ones. We had a lot of fun at Crossroad. Um, we made a lot of really good memories. I remember coming back from the beach and we were all just like singing and dancing on the bus and going crazy. <laughs> And nobody cared, and it was just really fun. Uh, it's basically, I have to say goodbye to 38 friends. So, yeah. It's not exactly an easy thing. I'm more happy because it's 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 ushered in a new chapter in my life, to be honest. So I'm happy to embark uh, on that new chapter, but you know, I'm sad to leave this one as well. The best part about Crossroad is that we're all different. And we all have our stories, we all have our quirks, and that's just part of the experience, is getting to know truly other people, uh, 31 other uh, individuals and making them uh, part of your life. So it was really incredible to connect with people and especially because I'm a little bit of an introvert, it was really nice to just feel like I could open up to some awesome people. Well, we're all trying to find a reunion place that's in the middle of all of our states and so we're just planning for the next time that we can all see each other again. Like, I think my biggest fear leaving this is that I'll never have something like this again. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. It's truly a one-of-a-kind um, adventure. It's not something you're gonna get anywhere else. No. I want to say thank you to everyone here, the staff, uh, the presenters that came. I want to thank all the donors and everybody who donates to Crossroad to make it as affordable as it can be, because this is just an amazing program. You are the, you are the present, you are the leaders today. And you know what's right, right inside of you. You don't need anybody to, to tell you what's right. Continue to let yourself be surprised um, by life and, and what the church has to offer, and um, frankly, what you yourself have to offer, because I think if we continue to learn how to be surprised, we will, we will be able to surprise others as well. And this will spark something in their life. It'll spark a desire to want to be involved. They can learn about how to be a good human being in life. There are many times where I was in awe with uh, how much I was learning, uh, not about, you know, theology, just about myself while serving. I mean, we've had so many different staff who, at the end of the program, felt like they got to know themselves better, got a sense of where they feel called to work, where they feel called most to love. and. I attribute that to these students, that the students who are yearning for Capital L life inspire the staff. It is incredibly humbling. I see it as a gift and a blessing to do this work every day. One of our faculty members turned to me this session and she goes, do you know you have the best job in the world? So, my gift is a smile, it's love, and a prayer.
with Spirit for Life and the capital L Life. Um, they love, and we need more people like that in this world. Of the wind, you can own the earth and still call your own.